Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today I'm going to show you how to use Melodyne for timing vocals. Now, what I show you in Melodyne 4 for timing vocals will also work for timing instruments, and it is very easy to do. You just have to know how Melodyne times stuff and the way that it works. So I'm just going to dive right in and show you how. All right, I'm here in Melodyne 4 studio, and I have a scratch vocal take against a scratch guitar take for a song that... I am demoing out right now, and there is one part right here between 32 and 33 that I do feel like is a bit rushed, and I'm going to let you hear it right now. Into the night, falling with starlight, I feel our hearts and our souls are... You can definitely hear how it's rushing right here, so what I want to do in Melodyne is kind of push this whole thing over just a little bit to try to get it back on beat. All right, so we do have a few different timing tools in Melodyne. We have the normal time tool, we have a time handle tool, and we have the attack speed tool. Another thing to notice is that over here, we do have our um, grid settings option where if you do have it clicked, when you, when you have your regular timing tool, you can only move notes around on grid. It is in the relative value, which is super cool, but we wanna turn this off for now so that way we can slide this around freehand. And this brings us to our next point, where when you're using the time tool, you are going to be time compressing and expanding the notes around it. So you can see me stretching it out right now, and it is compressing and expanding that note right here, which can create a lot of different problems. So we do have to be careful with how much we're stretching, because it will include artifacts in the sound. So we do have to be very, very strategic. So it's best to try to find notes that do have a bit more of a sustain to it because they tend to be able to take the compression expansion a little better than say like a breath or a short note. So I'm actually going to start with this right here. I know it's pretty far back and I'm gonna to go to a note, one note ahead in the next bar with the one that I wanna move. We're going to move it just a little bit, and then we're going to hear how it sounds against the starlight. I feel our hearts and our souls are come. All right, so just doing that alone, let's listen to it again, and it sounds really great in time. There is this little spot over here that still seems a little off. Fall in with starlight, I feel our hearts and our souls are. So we're just going to go ahead and zoom in and take a look. It's this little area right here, so again, we're just going to Go ahead and stretch that over. See how it sounds. Fill our hearts and the soul. Maybe even bring this over a little bit. Feel our hearts and the soul. Just a tad more. Feel our hearts and the souls are. Cool. It's good enough for this tutorial. Um, so let's just take a listen to it before and after. We'll go ahead and highlight everything. And I'm going to go ahead to edit, reset time. And this is what it sounded like before. And with starlight, I feel our hearts and our souls are. And with it. And with starlight, I feel our hearts and our souls are. Definitely much better. Um, now... There are other tools that you can use that definitely get way more um, advanced for your timing. I don't use these tools very much. I do think it's best practice to get your performance right at the source. So if you are hearing timing issues in the engineering and recording phase, fix it then. Try not to rely so much on Melodyne for your timing issues. This really should be for just fine tuning details. And especially when you're using it to fine-tuning background vocals or other doubling effects to make sure all your tracks line up properly. You should really try to stay away from this kind of editing with your main vocal. You should really get it right at the source. You do have these different tools. You have your attack speed tool and you have your time handle tool. I really don't use these tools often, like I said. So I'm actually just going to leave a video for you that you can go check out straight from Celimony and it'll explain all this again to you in, in greater detail. I just wanted to show you kind of a real world example of things to look for. Obviously, if you time compress too much, you're gonna create a lot of different problems. Sounds horrible, huh? So you really do have to be very strategic with where it is that you're time stretching. Um, another quick note I'd like to give you is in this pointer tool, you can just hit option and it'll give you that same ability to, instead of having to always switch over to your time tool. Thank you so much for checking out this video on how to time vocals in Melodyne Studio 4. 
I hope you got something out of it. Please leave me a comment below if you did or if you have any other questions about this topic. Please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. To all my other subscribers, I appreciate your continued support. I am Brad Johnson at johnson.audio where I help you sing your story, mix your mission, and master your message. I will see you on the next video. Bye.